Welcome to an explainer on Pakistan's recent cartographic aggrandizement. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has unveiled a new political map that includes all of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Sir Creek and Junagad. Pakistan's Foreign Minister have said that the new map reflects the aspirations of people. But India has dismissed the new map as a ridiculous assertion that neither has legal validity nor international credibility. The map depicts entire Jammu and Kashmir as a disputed territory and describes it as Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The boundary of Himachal Pradesh is depicted as the international border. The map does not show any borders in the east of Kashmir. It has also renamed Kashmir highways in Islamabad as Srinagar Highway. Pakistan seems to be very inconsistent in their claim. Former ambassador Vishnu Prakash has pointed out paradox in Pakistan's argument. On the one hand, Pakistan claims the entire Jammu and Kashmir as its territory. On the other hand, Pakistan's foreign minister says that the entire Kashmir region is disputed and hence a plebiscite should be conducted. The paradox is, if the entire Kashmir region is disputed and needed a plebiscite, how can Pakistan unilaterally claim the Jammu and Kashmir? Pakistan leaving out a claim line on the eastern end of Jammu and Kashmir also highlights its willingness to make China a third party in Kashmir dispute. This clearly runs against the spirit and principles of Shimla agreement, which treats Kashmir as a bilateral matter between India and Pakistan beyond the scope of any third party intervention. Kashmir is not just an issue of territorial dispute, rather it is a conflict of ideology, history, culture, trust and perception. For China, Ladakh is primarily a territorial dispute with strategic ramification. But for Pakistan, its territorial claim on Jammu and Kashmir is based on the immutable ideological conviction that it is an unfinished business of partition. With Pakistan, India has an international boundary which has been agreed upon. The line of control is delineated in map by both the sides. In contrast, the alignment of line of actual control with China has never been agreed upon and it is neither delineated nor demarcated. China also seems to believe it is superior to Indian military, so it uses conventional warfare methods to unsettle India. But Islamabad seems to realize it is weaker power in conventional term and hence resort to unconventional means, primarily terrorist infiltration to change the status quo. The new map of Pakistan claims Siachen as its territory. The Siachen glacier is the second longest glacier in the world's non-polar area. It is located in the Karagoram range just northeast of point coordinate NJ9842 where the line of control between India and Pakistan ends. The Siachen glacier which is the source of Nubra and Shayok rivers is part of Ladakh which has now been converted into a union territory. Pakistan wants LOC to be extended horizontally from the point coordinate NJ9842 to meet Karagora mountains which will bring Siachen glacier under Pakistan's control. India wants LOC to be extended vertically from the point coordinate NJ9842 which will bring Siachen glacier under India's control. Pakistan started giving visa for mountain expedition. India came to know about it and launched an operation Meghdut in 1984 on the world's highest battlefield. After the operation, the Indian Army controls the 70 km long Siachen Glacier, all of its tributary glaciers and the three main passes, the Siala, Bilafonla and Gyongla. The actual ground positioning line is the line that divides current position of Indian and Pakistani troops in Siachen Glacier region. The line extends from northernmost point of Hilosi to Indra Kohl. The AGPL is approximately 110 km long. Siachen Glacier dispute is one of the most futile and wasteful dispute in the world in terms of material and human loss. Stephen P. Cohen, a senior research fellow at Brookings Institution, has equated Siachen conflict between India and Pakistan to two bald men fighting for a comb. With both the countries having considerable amount of people under poverty, it is important that they quickly realize peace do have an economic value. The international boundary in Sir Creek area and international maritime boundary line between India and Pakistan
has not been demarcated. But in the new political map published by Pakistan, it has unilaterally projected Sir Creek as its territory. Sir Creek is a 96 km strip of water located between India and Pakistan in the marshy lands of Ran of Kutch. The creek opens up in the Arabian Sea and roughly divides the Kutch region of Gujarat from the Sindh province of Pakistan. It is named after a British representative, Sir Creek, who was requested to mediate between rulers of Sindh and that of Kutch. The dispute lies in the interpretation of maritime boundary line between Kutch and Sindh. Pakistan claims the entire Sir Creek as per 1914 resolution between Sindh and the Kutch. It made Sir Creek a part of Sindh. It created a boundary known as Green Line. India does not accept Green Line. India believes Green Line is an indicative line. India insists that Sir Creek should be divided between two countries according to Talbot principle. Under international maritime law, a Talbot is the middle of a primary navigable channel of a waterway that defines the boundary line between states. India believes in 1925 map which led to installation of mid-channel pillars. Pakistan says that Talbot principles apply for navigable water only and Sir Creek is not a navigable water. India argues that Sir Creek becomes navigable during high tide and fishermen use Sir Creek to go to sea. Sir Creek may have little strategic relevance but it has immense economic value. It is rich in oil, natural gas and other marine resources. The political implication of the dispute is that it could potentially destroy the process of confidence building measure which is very important to resolve all the outstanding issues. Pakistan in its new map claims the erstwhile state of Junagadh as part of Pakistan's territory. Junagadh was a princely state in the Katyawad region. After independence, Junagadh's Nawab Mahabad Kanji chose to accede to Pakistan. India refused to accept the Nawab's choice and pointed out that the state was 80% Hindu. India called for a plebiscite to decide the question of accession which was not accepted by both Pakistan and the Nawab. India cut off the supplies of fuel and coal to Junagadh and sent the troops to the frontier. On 26th October 1947, the Nawab and his family fled to Pakistan. On November 7, 1947, Junagadh's court, facing collapse, invited Government of India to take over the state's administration. Government of India accepted the invitation. Subsequently, the issue of Junagadh's integration with India was successfully resolved long ago after the referendum was conducted in Junagadh in February 1948, in which an overwhelming 95% of the state's residents voted to stay with India. Pakistan's claims on Junagadh may be very surprising for few, but this is not the first time that the Pakistan have tried to portray Junagadh as its territory. For an example, the 2012 Atlas of Pakistan have also shown Junagadh as its territory. Pakistan's move to publish a new political map can be seen as a tit-for-tat response to India's inclusion of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir as a part of Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and of Gilgit-Baltistan as part of Ladakh in the new map that the government of India released on November 2019. Pakistan has never missed an opportunity to internationalize the Kashmir issue. The timing of the release of the map is worth noting because Pakistan has deliberately released a map just a day before the first anniversary of Government of India's decision to roll back the special status of Jammu and Kashmir by abrogating Article 370. So this move by Pakistan can also be seen as another exercise to gain international attention. Pakistan's unilateral claims is a regressive step in resolving the conflicts and not conducive for future resolution. After Nepal's claim on Kalapani region and China altering the status quo along the line of actual control in the western sector, the Pakistan's new political map has made India to face a three-pronged cartographic challenge from its immediate neighbors. India should be wary of growing China-Pakistan-Nepal axis and calibrate its foreign policy in such a manner its territorial integrity is never threatened.